my administration will always honor, cherish, and support the men and women in blue, and we are proud to do it. In moments of danger and despair, you are the reason we never lose hope. We promise you that we will always have your back now and forever. We will have your back. Well, President Trump pledging his support for law enforcement at the annual police chiefs convention, vowing to protect those in uniform. So how does his message resonate with the men and women in uniform? Here now to weigh in is our law enforcement panel, Dr. Darren Porter, a former NYPD lieutenant, Steve Rogers, a former New Jersey police officer, and Sergeant Joey Imperatrice. He is an active NYPD sergeant. Thank you all for joining us. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. So when you hear the president say words like that, always honor, cherish, we're proud of you. We will always have your back. What does that mean to active duty officers and those who have been on the force before? Darren, I'll start with you. Well, this is a reflection of his campaign promises. This is something that he touted in moving forward for the election for the president of the United States. We have to take in consideration what the president's job is. The president is at the forefront of the executive branch. The executive branch is responsible for enforcement, and he's simply translating that message to law enforcement to let them know that he's a staunch supporter for their cause. Steve? President Trump is the 21st century Elliot Nest. He is providing police officers all over this country what they need in order to enforce the law, something that they haven't had in a long time. Mm -hmm. And Sergeant? So for eight years of President Obama, it was the anti-police rhetoric. There was the uh, protest every single day and the rallying up with the crowd. And now you have a president who goes up there and it gives officers a sense of pride. And they go out there and they can just do their job much, much better. Yeah, we can take a look at some of the statistics so far in 2018. We know that 40 police officers have been shot and killed in the line of duty. You can compare that to last year, 35 police officers shot and killed. And one of the things that the president talked about specifically was Chicago. He said that he's going to send his attorney general there to try to lower the crime statistics there. And one of the things he wants to bring back is the stop and frisk policy. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, you know, it's interesting. I hear this narrative being touted regularly in connection with bringing stop and frisk from mm -hmm. one place to the next. This is something that goes back to a landmark decision referred to as Terry versus Ohio, which allows law enforcement officers to conduct a quote unquote stop and frisk. This is something that could be nationally applied as it relates to the Fourth Amendment. The truth of the matter is the issue issues that they have in Chicago are more specific to the gang culture, mm -hmm. and they really need to target those gangs. It's not just so, quote unquote, introducing stop and frisk, but the eradication of the gang issues that they have in Chicago. And I think the attorney general can put together programs such as team enforcement to eradicate that problem. And, and Steve, in addition to that, he also talked about the increase in funding for law enforcement that his administration has uh, put forth. Well, the funding is very important. Police need the tools and order to do a number of things, obviously to uh, uh, enhance their reactive patrol methodologies. But what about preventive methodologies? We're talking about funding for community policing to build relationships in the community. What about giving the police the ability to go out and to collect and gather critical intelligence that will prevent not only crimes, but possible terrorist attacks against this country? Mm -hmm. And then one of the other things he talked about, which obviously hits close to everyone's heart, that is uh, law enforcement officers who are killed in the line of duty and he brought this up in his campaign and putting forth an immediate uh, death penalty um, you know condition as to those who kill police officers uh, police officers. You look at Officer Piagentini and Waverly Jones, yes. the poor wife going back and forth, right in her second impact statement. I actually spoke to one of the family friends yesterday. Mm -hmm. And they should be put to death because if I go out there as a regular citizen and go do something in another state, of course they're going to try to put me to the electric chair. And for an officer, they're the guardians of the United States. And we need to set an example. If you go out there and hurt an officer, you're going to be penalized. And it's going to stop other people or deter them from going out there and thinking it's okay. Yeah. And Darren, finally, we talked about the stop and frisk policy. One of the arguments against it is that it's racist, that, that it's uh, inhumane. Um, but at the same time, we just talked about Kanye West uh, meeting with the president to talk about those who have been unjustly um, put behind bars. So the president President is also working in that field as well. Right. When we look at the communities of we color, we have about 20 seconds. When we look at the community co communities of color, they're under siege, mm -hmm. and no one needs policing more so than the people in these communities of color. And the people that live in these communities want the police there to protect them mm -hmm. because the gangs are not going to be pr the protection order. All right. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. A lot to get through. Thanks for having us. And we will be right back. Stay with us.